Dr. Celine Gounder joins me now from New York City. She's an infectious disease specialist and epidemiologist for NYU and Bellevue Hospital. She was also a member of the Biden-Harris Transition COVID-19 Advisory Board. Dr. Gounder, welcome. How quickly do you believe the FDA will be able to review this data submitted by Pfizer? Based on how quickly they've been able to turn around the prior submissions, both for emergency use authorization as well as the full approval for the Pfizer vaccine, we anticipate that the FDA will issue authorization for five to 11 year olds to get vaccinated by Halloween. So I think you're gonna see a lot of uh, work being done at the FDA over time uh, to get this done, but I think we're going to see this get done quite soon here. And so at this point, once this data has been submitted to the FDA, it's pretty strong, right? I mean, doctors are pretty much in agreement that it probably will pass at this point. Yeah, we're quite confident. I do think it's it's important to remember that kids are not just small adults. So Pfizer did have to look at different doses. They were looking at, um, you know, thousands of children to see how those different doses would perform. Uh, and those doses were also adjusted within that age group of five to 11. So there's quite a lot of um, uh, titrating of adjusting uh, by age. But what we've seen so far is uh, the data shows that the vaccines are safe and effective in those age groups as well. Uh, and so I think parents should feel confident that if the FDA issues an authorization here, that they should move forward and get their kids vaccinated. Now, doctor, vaccinations have been lagging in older children, 12 to 17, even though that approval has been in place for quite some time. Do you believe we are likely to see similar hesitancies when the Pfizer vaccine is approved for five to 11 year olds with the majority of parents perhaps taking a wait and see approach? Yeah, I think the uh, 12 to 17 year old age group provides a preview. Um, the number one predictor of whether 12 to 17 year olds have gotten vaccinated is whether their parents have gotten vaccinated. And unfortunately, vaccinations among adults have broken down along party lines uh, with Democrats far more likely to get vaccinated than Republicans. Uh, other predictors of a parent being vaccinated include their um, income, their educational status, and uh, unfortunately, I, I think you're going to see this play out again with the younger kids um, and perhaps even more hesitancy with the younger kids just simply because they're younger and parents are perhaps a bit more protective of that age group, too. Right. I think it's, it's important that the information get out there in terms of what this vaccine is for the younger kids, because as you say, they are not just small adults. These are smaller doses. These have been tweaked specifically for younger children. It's important, I think, for parents to understand that point. Yeah, and what we've seen is that the best communicators of information about the vaccines are pediatricians. So we should absolutely be um, enlisting pediatricians in educating the public and educating parents. Schools are very important as well. And where schools have provided information to parents, to students about vaccination, this has really had an impact. And then finally, giving parents paid time off. A lot of parents are reporting that just simply having paid time off to take their kids in to get vaccinated can make a huge difference here. So there are some clear things we can do to help this along. Absolutely. And doctor, I want to look at the bigger picture now because officials say 16 percent of New York hospital workers are not fully vaccinated. They were mandated to have had at least their first shot by the end of business day yesterday. So that means more than 83,000 workers are at risk of termination. How dangerous could this potential staffing shortage be as the pandemic continues? I think what you're also seeing is a breakdown by type of staff. So um, doctors are by far the most vaccinated um, when you're talking about um, custodial staff, uh, other staff like that. Those are the ones that are the least vaccinated. I think if our healthcare providers are by and large vaccinated, so our doctors, our nurses, our respiratory therapists, our physical therapists, those are the ones that are especially hard to, to do without. Uh, you know, I, I think we are prepared to, to manage some of that short staffing, at least uh, in the short term here. And um, doctor, we understand that antiviral pills may be used to treat COVID-19 uh, relatively soon. What more can you tell us about that? 
Yeah, there are three companies um, that have antiviral pills for COVID in phase three clinical trials. You have Merck, Pfizer, and Roche. We anticipate that in a couple of months here, we'll have the data from those phase three clinical trials, and then that would get submitted to the FDA for an authorization or approval. Uh, you know, I do think it's really important to understand that you still don't want to get COVID. It's sort of like we have pills, antiviral pills for HIV, and we can treat HIV, but it's preferred that you just don't get HIV in the first place. So, you know, I think even if we have these pills approved, vaccination and prevention of infection in the first place should really be what we are trying and aiming for, and that we have pills as a backup option if you do have an infection, if you do get sick. Secondly, with, with these pills, and this applies to monoclonal antibodies as well, they only really work well if you catch somebody very soon after infection. By the time they arrive at the hospital really short of breath, these kinds of anti antiviral therapies just don't work as well. And so if we want for these kinds of therapies to have an impact, we're just gonna have to be testing people a whole lot more so that we can catch people much earlier in the course of their disease. Dr. Counter, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you sharing your expertise with us.